you live? Yes. Welcome. Welcome to the Dixie Bells page, Facebook page, Instagram. Welcome to Dixie Bells Instagram page. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. I'm here in full spirit. Um, happy Sappy. Happy Sappy. <laughs> happy St. Patrick's Day. I am fit chased because I know someone's going to ask what my shirt says. Um, I'm here to paint in every single Dixie Bell green that I can find. That's what I'm here to do with you guys tonight. So welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. We're here every single Wednesday night for Whimsical Wednesday on Dixie Bell's main Facebook page and now Instagram. Um, I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell and I have been with Dixie Bell for, oh my gosh, over three years now. And we've done this every single week. I missed you guys last week though. I was on vacation. Uh, we were in Colorado. It was amazing. Uh, usually I have my husband Matt behind the camera and he is not with us tonight, but my daughter Zadie is manning both cameras. She's 14. Y'all say hello to Zadie. Um, she's helped, was willing to help me out tonight. So, um, she's got good eyes though, I guess, because she's down low. I'm used to Matt being like this close to the camera. I hope she doesn't miss a comment. You're sure you can see? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to get started. This is not a custom order. I'm usually working on custom orders. Um, this is not a custom order because I didn't have anyone wanting green right now and I wanted to do all of the greens. Dixie Bell, if you go to their uh, website, DixieBellPaint.com, which actually I've put the link at, at the bottom of this video, that's my affiliate link. If you look on their website and you go to paint section and you pull up the paint section, you can actually pull up every single color that's available. You can shop by color. You can pull up blues, greens, reds, whites, browns, blacks, yellows, purples. Um, but some of the colors tend to overlap. If you go to the green section, which I did yesterday, I believe there were 14 colors of green listed. 14 greens, you guys. Dixie Belle has a lot of greens, a lot of blues, and a lot of grays. Um, green is one of their hot colors. Um, a lot of these greens are super, super big sellers. And then some of them aren't as popular. So I thought it would be a good thing to do tonight. Get them all out, show them to you, but I actually didn't pull all 14 greens out. I pulled 10 out. So we've got 10 colors of greens right across here. I feel like Vanna White, right across here. <laughs> but don't be confused by the purple and the pink sitting up here on the top. Um, I put this up here because that has to do with my overall design for this piece. So I'm going to set those behind and show you these greens that I have right here. And we're going to talk about them. Can y'all see them really well? Um, let me know, please, if you have any questions. Also, Dixie Bell is behind the scenes. Usually there to answer any questions that you might have that my daughter might miss or might not relay to me. And um, also, we love to know where you're tuning in from, so please let us know where you're tuning in from. We have people that watch around the world, um, around the clock. We have live videos going constantly, so please say hello. Let us know that you're here. Let us know if you have any questions. I tend to talk fast and a lot. So I started over here with the lightest green, and I moved over all the way to the darkest green. Now, these two greens down here probably are two of the greens that a lot of people don't use. This is Holy Guacamole. And this one is collard greens. I posted a piece on my Facebook page today, actually. If you follow, if you will give me a follow, a like and a follow over on Tracy's Fancy. Um, I posted a piece there that was a, a vintage or antique china hutch, which this is as well, um, that had both of these colors on it on the bottom of the piece. If you look closely at the bottom of that piece, it looks black on the piece, but it's not. It's collard greens. This is a very, very deep, kind of a deep brownish green. It's an earthy, mossy, deep color. And then this is Holy Guacamole, which is kind of a brownie green as well. It's kind of like the guacamole that has set out for a few hours at a party and it starts to get that dingy color. So a lot of people think that they won't like this color, but this is a great neutral. And I know that Malia actually um, of Mustard Tree Market, Malia uses this color a lot. Um, it's a really, it's a really good boho color and it's a really good neutralizing color. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. And I'm not sure if we will use it or not, but I've got it up here. So I'm gonna start here on this side and tell you what your colors are. What's going on, Sadie? <laughs> You're making faces. No, I'm just reading colors. Okay. This is our uh, collard greens, holy guacamole. This one right here is called palmetto. I love palmetto. It's like a, kind of like a, I'm gonna get two colors at once. This is kind of like a, tealy green. It's got a little bit of a blue cast to it. A little bit of a blue cast. 
This one is kudzu, K-U-D-Z-U. What is kudzu? I don't know what kudzu is. I have no idea, but I like kudzu green. Kudzu green is a bold, strong green. You can see it next to the southern. Um, not quite as green as my wig or my shirt, but it is a really good bold green. I use it a lot. Kudzu is a good color. Next to kudzu, we have my favorite. And if you're following me on Tracy's Fancy, you've seen me post over the last two days. I've posted two pieces with this green right here, and it's called tree frog green. So kudzu looked really bold, right? It did. Until you put tree frog green next to it, and tree frog green really tones down kudzu. Tree frog green is super bright super lively, tons of energy, light-filled color. It looks great with a black wax over the top of it. If you're looking for an emerald green, this tree frog green with black wax on top will give you emerald. Yes, baby? Um, some people are saying kudzu is a vine. Is a vine? Oh, kudzu is a vine? Yeah. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Mm -mm. No, I did not know that. I wondered. I've never looked it up until I just said it out loud to y'all. I'm like, that's kind of a weird word to say out loud, kudzu. So it's a vine. That makes sense because it looks very earthy. It's a very earthy color. So do you see it next to tree frog green? Don't be afraid of tree frog green. Try it with besting wax in black. All right, so that's, now let me bring you tree frog green with, oh shoot, oh shoot. I just gave you all of the wrong information. Sorry, this is evergreen. This was not kudzu. This was evergreen, like Christmas tree evergreen next to tree frog green. So, so sorry. So sorry, this was evergreen. Okay, now, now let's get kudzu. So kudzu's a vine? Because it's a very light green. This is tree frog and this is kudzu. Now you can see what a neutral, lovely color it is. This is kudzu. I should look at the labels before I say them, even though I know them. Love, love, love kudzu. It's a beautiful color. So let's go down here. So this one, let me check it before I say it. This is mint. This is mint. Here's kudzu and here's mint. Mint goes without, without saying, right? It goes without saying. Now, some people think that mint and limeade are similar, but they're not. They're very different. This is mint. This is limeade. Limeade looks almost yellow next to it, doesn't it? But if you paint with limeade, it's a very vibrant, pale, pale green that does have a tint of yellow with it. So these are the two, mint and limeade. And people, this is mint julep and limeade. And people do tend to think that they're very similar, but they're not. They're very, very different in their, in their color tone. This one goes, mint julep goes a little bit blue, and limeade goes a little bit yellow. So I know that I talk with spoons a lot. We do the Dixie Bell spoons a lot. Um, but this I feel like you can see better. So sea glass, sea glass I actually feel like falls into the blue family sometimes. But this is sea glass next to mint julep as well. So you can see that mint julep next to sea glass almost makes sea glass look like a baby blue, but it's also in the green family. Yes, babe? Gail wants to know what the color of the cabinet is behind you. I'm gonna tell you that in just a second, it's a primer. <laughs> it's a primer. And then the very last color that we've got is farmhouse green. It's the palest of the greens. And I've got it next to limeade here. So limeade is very light, but has a yellow cast. And Farmer House Green is the palest pale of greens that we have in the Dixie Belle Green line. The color behind me is Boss in gray. So Dixie Belle has Clear Boss, White Boss, and Gray Boss. Boss is a primer. This cabinet was a bleeder, you guys. Let me show you all how dark it is. Look at the inside. This is what color it was. See the inside? We're going to replace that backboard that someone had put a hole in the back of it. And it has shelves on the inside. And this is glass. That's glass. But I've got it covered with tape and paper just so I don't get any paint on the glass. And I primed it with Dixie Bell's Boss in gray because it's actually, I believe, the very, very, very best of the bosses for hard, hard bleeders. So this is just one coat of Dixie Bell's Boss. Blocks odors and stops stains. And um, it blocks cigarette smoke, it blocks oil stains, um, it blocks wood tan and bleed throughs, and deep dark colors from the underneath side. And will also block odors as well. Um, yes, did you have another question? Yeah, Monique is asking if Dixie Belle has an emerald green. Um, emerald, straight up emerald, we don't. So these are the colors of green right here. 
Um, I would say that palmetto gets you closer to that, but the way I achieve emerald green, if you will check out my pieces that I posted over the last couple days, you'll see some really vibrant jewel tone green. That is this color. That's this one right here, which is tree frog green. And if you just put a black, a, just one simple coat of black wax over the top of it and wipe it back, you will get a beautiful jewel toned um, emerald green. So that's this right here. Okay, so the reason I had these two colors out is because I'm gonna be doing some highlighting on this cabinet and on the inside, I'm thinking I'm gonna paint the inside of this cabinet and plum crazy. That's this gorgeous um, kind of a plummy fuchsia color, not quite hot pink, it's more of a deep plum. So I'm gonna use that color. I thought about amethyst, but I'm not real sure, um, or aubergine, we'll see. Okay, so let's get started. Usually when I paint, I'm gonna do a lot of blending. Uh, because there's glass in the middle, I'm also gonna be using a transfer, but we're gonna be wrapping the transfer from this side. You wanna see what transfer I'll be using? I'm planning on using, um, this one is called Floral Romance, one of the new transfers. This is one part of the sheet. So you can see that it's got, this is where I pulled out the Plum Crazy and the Amethyst Purple that I have here and Aubergine. Um, and then it's got the green tones in it. So this is just one piece of it. It is gorgeous. And um, I'll be wrapping that around one side, but I also think I'm gonna use the succulents with it. Because you know, you get the beautiful arrangements um, for doors and centerpieces, and they've got magnolias and roses and succulents all wrapped in together. Why do we have to just use one Transfer, we don't. You can build your transfers on each other. You can cut them apart and piece them together and make your own unique arrangements. And so I'm planning on using some of the succulents with it. Let me show you a couple of the succulent colors. So here are some of the succulent colors right here. Do you see these? Look how pretty those are. See them? They match the same color tones that we're using in the big arrangement as well. So that's my plan with that and I'm really excited about it. Yes, baby? Uh, somebody asked where the pints of Guinness. Oh, I don't have, I don't have any Guinness. <laughs> Guinness is a beer. There's no beer today. Oh. Sorry, guys. I was hoping y'all might have yours on your end, but I'm working. I'm at work. There's no, no, no drinking during working hours. Yes, babe. Susan said you're her inspiration. Oh, that's so nice, Susan. Who's, who is that, Susan? Which Susan? Uh, Walter? Uh, oh gosh. It's okay. Susan oh, Tandy. Oh. <laughs> okay. yeah. You're so sweet. Would it be this? Maybe it's this. Okay, so usually when I start putting a coat on a piece, I like to start with like a mid-tone, not a light and not a dark. I want to start kind of in the middle for my base coat. That way when I start highlighting, bringing highlights into it, I can head down to the lighter colors. And when I start low lighting it or shadowing it, I bring in some of the darker colors. So I'm gonna start in the middle right here and I actually think I'm gonna go with Kudzu. So um, the one that I got wrong a minute ago. I told you that Evergreen was Kudzu. This is Kudzu. So let's watch Kudzu in action. This is a brand new jar. So Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint is just what it is. It is a chalk mineral paint. It is not an acrylic paint. It is not a latex paint. Um, this is exactly how they come. They have wrapped with the seal. I'll open this up. There'll be like a little white foam lid on the top. You just need to make sure that you've got it mixed really well. Um, shake it really well. This is a 16 ounce jar. They also come in eight ounces and 32 ounces as well. And um, they work really well by themselves. They work really well with water. You will see a lot of us painters using water with them. Um, and we use a mister bottle that looks just like this. You don't have to use it with water. Uh, the paint goes on, it's pretty thick, which is what I love about it. I love the thickness of this paint. But if you want it thicker and you want to add texture to your paint, you just open it up and let it sit. Just let air get to it. Pour some out into a bowl and let that bowl sit there. It'll actually thicken up for you. Um, work really well on canvases. You can paint wood, you can paint glass, you can paint metal items. Dixie Bell paint goes on everything everything. The only reason I primed this piece is because it had a lot of uh, wood tannins, a lot of bleed through. Um, if you want your paint thinner, you can put this in a bowl, add a little bit of water to it in the bowl and paint with that. 
You can wet your brush and use a wet brush, or you can paint on the piece like we're gonna do and then spray the piece. So I'm gonna get started right up here. I'm just spraying my piece with a little bit of water. And let me pull up one of my brushes. I'm gonna use my flat medium brush. Go ahead, Sadie. Cassie, Cassie wants to know if you ship to Canada. Um, Dixieville actually has Canadian retailers. Is that what she's asking for the paint itself? Is that what, what she's asking or is she talking about the painted furniture pieces? I'm not sure. I think it's the painted furniture. Okay. If it's the painted furniture, um, I'm sure that we can, but I had never have, I personally haven't shipped to Canada. If she's talking about the paint itself, um, yes, we have, um, retailers in Canada. We have Dixie Bell retailers in Canada. If anyone is looking for a local retailer, you can just go to the Dixie Bell website. Um, the link that I put on this video, just click that link and there will be a find a retailer uh, section where you just put in your zip code and you will be able to locate a retailer. Someone wants to know if you can paint without primer. Yes, you can paint without primer. Absolutely. You don't need a primer with this paint. You don't need a primer or a top coat, actually. Uh, Dixie Bell paint will seal itself within 30 days. It's got a 30-day cure time. Most of us use a top coat on the paint because um, I don't have the patience to wait 30 days before I'm going to use my painted furniture. Um, so most of us usually put a top coat on there just for added durability. Uh, but you don't have to, and you don't have to prime either. However, because it is a chalk mineral paint, it is very open. It's very open and porous to whatever is below it. So if you don't know what your surface is that you're painting, if you don't know if, you know what's underneath there, if you don't know if it's been exposed to a lot of nicotine or oils over the years, and you can't get it cleaned off really well with white lightning, which is the amazing cleaner that Dixie Bell has, then yes, I would, if ever in doubt, prime. That's my, that's my motto. If ever in doubt, prime it. It didn't take me long to prime this, guys. I put this primer on, it maybe took me 20 minutes. Probably 20 minutes. It's not, it doesn't take long. Um, um, go ahead, Sadie. So, Roxana wants to know what color green that is. This is kudzu, Roxana. Isn't it beautiful? And do y'all see the coverage? This is one coat. One coat. And the beauty of this product also is that it dries in about 20 minutes, depending on where you are. It dries in about 20 minutes. So if you start on one end and you work your way across, by the time you get to the side, you can already go right back. Sorry. You can go right back and start your second coat over on the other side. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to do for kudzu. Um, I'm thinking that my deeper, darker colors are going to wrap down and around. That's what I'm thinking. So let's pull out another green. What should we do next? Let's see. Uh, where will they go? Y'all are asking good questions. No question is stupid. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions. You're doing a great job, Zadie. Thank you. No big St. Patrick's Day plans. That's where Matt is, guys. That's where my husband is. Usually he's the filmer, but it's St. Patrick's Day. So he's somewhere having green beer, I'm sure. Okay, so let's go. Um, mm -mm -mm. I think I'm going to say, well, let's go a little bit of tree frog. You want to? It's a little bold, but let's do a little bit. We'll just do a tiny bit of tree frog. And then we'll go straight into either evergreen or um, palmetto. Oh my gosh, y'all. I love, love palmetto. But let's just have fun with the greens. If I don't like it, we can cover it up. It's just paint. We can cover it up. Let's see. Now, if I were already into the blending aspects of it, y'all, did y'all know? Did y'all know that the Best Ink Wax brushes are available as of today? They hit online today. If you've been waiting for them, you haven't already gotten yours, they're available today. You can click that link that's on this video. This is it right here. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous handle. It's an unfinished handle stamped with Dixie Bell. It's got a mix of synthetic and natural bristles. It's amazing. It's called the Best Ink Wax Brush, but it's not just for wax. It's a beautiful blending brush, beautiful. I did some tea set trays today. As a matter of fact, Zadie, there's one right behind you. Want to hand it to me? Right behind you. I was working on these Alice in Wonderland tea set right there, baby. 
Right, no, look at my hand. Look at my hand. Right there. Oh, right there. Um, this is just my first coat, but I did some blending today. This is uh, sea glass, lavender, and amethyst all together. It's a, it's a gorgeous blending brush. So three colors of paint blended into one. That's my scratch coat. Um, but it's a start, and I did it with the best thing, flax brush. Um, yeah. Someone's asking, how do you make sure you don't have brush strokes painting so fast? This. This is the magic right here. You don't have brush strokes when you spritz it with water. It just spreads it out, and it, you just don't. It, you just don't. Um, just spray um, it with a little bit of water. Someone said the highlight and low light. Oh. The highlight and low light of... We're going to be using lighter colors to highlight, and we're going to be using darker colors to low light. The screen that I'm about to use right now, guys, is going to be super bold. I already know that. Um, so, you know, don't freak out. Um, but sometimes layering colors is good. This is really bright and really crazy. Crazy, crazy. But let's blend it out. See the difference between the two? Look at the difference. But watch what happens if you brush with a little bit of water and start to kind of blend the two together. It really, if you put a little bit of, of uh, the kudzu into the tree frog green, you get like this natural progression. Do you see that? Look how pretty that looks. So it went from looking crazy to not looking so bad. So let's do it over here. Same thing, look at the difference between the two. Here we go. And I don't even usually blend on the first coat like this. Usually you need to get all of your base coat down and then, then you can kind of start blending it out. So there's that, here's my kudzu. Um, so I'm gonna put that here. I'm gonna take my other brush and just start fading in that line like that, bringing the two colors together and it makes it look not so bad, right? Blended it out, that's not bad, I kinda like. All right, let's go into evergreen. Let's do a little bit of evergreen. Yes. Terry says it looks gray. Is blending really easy to do? Oh, it looks great or gray? Great. Great, oh, thank you. It's real easy, y'all, with water. It's really, really easy. If you just, water is the trick. That's, that's, what I, that's all I have to say. Water is the trick. Misting or keeping your brush wet and keeping your paint wet is the trick. And being really light with your hand. Think about it like putting makeup on your face. That's how I think about it. Um, you know, if you're blending your eyeshadows or your blush onto your cheeks. Ooh, paint. Um, yes, Saints? Uh, Donna, Donna Lloyd says, what are you spraying the furniture? This is water, Donna. This is water. And I'm just spraying where I'm going to paint. Just like that. I'm just going to... Start wrapping these colors around. So I spray it with a little bit of water and then I get my brush and here we go. Let's put on a little bit of evergreen. Very different, it's a very earthy green next to our tree frog green. But the same thing happens where if we start to blend the colors together, wash them together, they just sort of work themselves out and it just, you know, adding different colors. If you look at a leaf, if you look at a leaf in this world, it's not just one color of green. It's many, many, many colors of green. So let's get, this is our tree frog green brush. Bring that back down. And the blend isn't gonna be perfect today, y'all, because this is my first coat. So my second coat's where I'll go back in and perfect the color drop. I'm calling this a color drop because it's gonna get darker as we go down. But do you see this here? Um, David says, probably important to mention the type of bottle, mist versus spray. Oh, yes. Okay, so what David's talking about is, this is a mister bottle instead of a sprayer bottle. So it puts out a very fine mist versus um, a big spray. That's what he's talking about. So I don't know if you can see this or not. Can you see that? It's like a mist. Hairdressers use these. Um, so I'm gonna do this over here as well. Puts out just a fine, fine mist. All right, so here we go with a little bit of evergreen. <clears throat> Any other questions, Biggie? Well, no. 
I'm doing this. I can't wait to add the next color. The next color is my favorite one. That's going to be Palmetto. So I hope by y'all seeing how sloppy I'm being actually right now, just, just getting my color on, um, how easy this is to actually do. Put a little bit of tree frog on here. And then when I do this, I'll step back at the place that y'all are. It's very difficult to see what you're doing when you're this close to it. So I have to kind of step back. I'll look back and see if my color movement is where I want it to be. Um, and as long as we won't, of course, get anywhere near finishing this. This one will take me quite a while. But um, as long as you follow along on Tracy's Fancy, you'll be able to see the progression of this as it goes. Let me get this one open. And you will hopefully be amazed. People say, oh, I was questioning it when I first saw you doing that, but once uh, I saw it finished, I really like it. So let's pull out one of the, I don't think that these are available right now on the website, but this is, um, oh my gosh, I forgot what we're calling these. Ah, I forgot what we're calling these. These are the flat, they fit wonderfully in your hands. They work really well with the chalk paint. I really, really like them. So <clears throat> here we go. Can y'all see down here? Yes. I'm going to start adding this color down here on the bottom because that's the color that I want to wrap around the bottom. Zan Walker wants to know if the base coat boss was in gray. Yes, this is boss gray. Yes. How long will it take to finish? Um, it's hard to say because I don't ever do anything start to finish. I have about five other projects going on out here at the same time. Um, so it's really hard to say, but uh, I don't know. I would say within a week, I'll have it done. I'll be done messing with it. I am going to paint the inside of this piece too, though, you guys. And we do have to replace the back. So it's got a little bit of, it has a little bit of work that needs to be done to it. I'm going to switch brushes. I don't like this brush as much for the front of pieces as I do for the tops. It works really, really well for the tops. Pieces, and I'm going to switch to this color. So, let's see. At least you're getting to see all of the greens next to each other, right? Pulling, putting down the ugly coat. That's what I call this. Scratch coat, ugly coat, hot, hot mess coat. Beverly wants to know how many hours a day do you paint? Uh, I don't know, Zadie, you want to answer that? Uh, all day. <laughs> That's my 14-year-old <laughs> saying that. Can I tell him what you said when you were little? If you want to. <laughs> <laughs> when she was, when I first started this business, y'all, when she was first born, I wasn't doing this. And, uh... When I first started this business, I was out here way too long. I didn't have boundaries. I didn't, I didn't watch my time very well. I was pumping out, you know, a huge bedroom suits every single week. And uh, she, bless her heart, she was used to me just staying in, the, in her room all day playing with her. And finally, I was like, Mama's gotta, Mama needs to get to work. And so I would turn around, she'd be standing at the front of the garage door, and she'd put her hands like this, and she'd say, I hate furniture. I hate your furniture. She feels bad about it now. She's like, Mom, I was little. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Um, okay, so this line here obviously needs some work. So I'm going to get my brush and my other paint color, even though I don't worry about blending so much on this on this scratch coat. Um, it would have been better if I had one solid green coat, but I'm going to go ahead and re-wet this and put a little bit of water on this line. And I probably could get my best stain brush, that wax brush, but I think I won't. Just gonna kind of soften this line up here. Water's the trick. Just water. Uh, yes, Doreen, it is a prime. The baby blue color. Oh, does it look baby blue? Yeah. Is it white? No, it's gray. It's a gray. Okay. So 
So I really need to let this coat dry because it's not really blending out very well. I need to let this dry and come back and blend that out. So, but at least you can see them next to each other. Does Colorado Springs still have Dixie Bell Retailer? Do you know by chance? Oh, you know what? I didn't look before we went, but I bet they do. I bet they do. I don't know why they why they wouldn't. I don't know. Dixie Bell, can you tell us? Are they on right now? Uh, I don't know. I did not even look when I was there. Well, I was in Pagosa Springs. How far is that from Colorado Springs? This is looking like a fun, hot mess. I love that this is looking like such a hot mess because y'all are going to love it when it's done. In honor of all of the greens, we're honoring the Dixie Bell greens tonight. That's what we're doing. I'm saving these bottom corners over here to pull out that collard green. I'm going to pull out the collard green for you. And it won't be stripy like this. I'm not going to have it be stripy. It's going to be much more organic. That's that. Put a little bit of... Dixie Bell is not on. They're not? Are they really not? No, they're not. Who said? Um, I don't... Someone... Someone said? Just... I don't want to butcher her name. <laughs> Jaque. <laughs> I mess up people's names all the time. Uh, Michelle says a little too far for me to drive at this time. Uh, Erica says Pagosa and Colorado Springs are pretty far. Oh, they are. I didn't know. I don't know why I was thinking I was in Colorado Springs. I was in Pagosa Springs. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the darkest green. This one right here. And this one's collard greens. I very rarely use it. As a matter of fact, I think I've used it twice in three years. Um, I don't use it that often. But I honestly don't paint with green that much. I don't know why it shows really well on camera. Um, I should paint with it more. But I don't. Greens and blues, I just don't paint with that often, but I have lately. Okay, so collard green. We're going to get out another brush. I'm going to start down here. Sadie, can they see me down here? Yes. All right. So here we go, collard greens. Here we go. Can Dixie? I mean, uh, Instagram see okay? Um, it's actually a beautiful color. Look at this. Look how pretty that is. It's a gorgeous color. Almost looks brown. Almost looks like a deep deep brown, but it's just a really rich, really rich earthy green. Just making sure I'm taking off any excess, let that dry and I'll come back and do my blending. I'm going to take this across the bottom a little bit. Okay, so remember, scratch coat, guys, just getting my color flow. I'll come back and powder all this out, smooth it all out later. But at least we've got the entire front covered, and you can see all of the greens, one after the other. Um, of course, we didn't use any of the super light ones because those I would be coming back in later to highlight with or to low light. Once I kind of figure out my direction, right now I don't have... Clearly, I don't really have a total direction down with what, what I'm doing. I just, in general, knew that I wanted the darker to be towards the bottom and kind of wrapped up the top. Woo, what a mess, right? Such a mess. easy that was to smooth that out right there and this is just the scratch coat but it just smoothed out that dividing line same with up here just squirt that a little bit dip it in your other color just kind of smooth it out one 
once you let this first coat dry, you'll be able to go back and do that in between coats, and it's just so much better. Let's go smooth that other side out right here. See the difference between that side and this side? Let's just smooth this out a little. stand back and see <laughs> it is a hot mess Anita you're asking what am I using this piece for I really don't know yet I really don't know it's gonna it's available I just wanted a piece that I could put all of the colors on and I didn't have a client piece that I could do that because my client pieces are super specific so I was like well I'm gonna use all the greens so I just got on marketplace and found this piece yesterday and it's a china cabinet and it's got shelves in the middle this is glass and then it has two cabinets, one on each side that also have shelves. So I believe it's a china hutch of some sort. Um, so I don't know, but I bought it so I could play. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. So here, once again, are the transfers that I'm planning on using. Planning on building two different transfers. I'm planning on building with the floral romance and the succulents and, and together. I'm planning on putting them together so you can see um, the colors. Look at that. See? See this right here? Especially look at those succulents with those, all those colors. Look at that. All the way down by all of them. It looks amazing, right? And then if you open up the cabinet and have this color on the inside, isn't that going to be stunning? I think it's going to be gorgeous. And then we'll be accenting with the gold mousse all over. Adding some wood you bend as well. Yes? Uh, thank you, Teresa. And... What are you using this piece for? Oh, I think that's what I was answering. That's what Anita asked. Why'd you make that face? Oh, Dad texted that he got me new glasses. Oh, I don't know what he's talking about. Scared. <laughs> oh, he did. He did. He probably got you green St. Patrick's Day glasses. Uh, anyway, guys, um, this is a start. This is a start. So make sure that you're following along. Um, I cannot wait to bring this piece into life and into fruition so that you can see how, it, you know, you see the movement, you see the colors, you hear my ideas, and then eventually, like, boom, magic. Like a leprechaun and magic, you get to see it all come together. Yes? There's about three questions. Oh, okay. Um, Valerie says, so with the new transfers, they're avail when? Um, the new transfers, some, some of your retailers, um, are, you can pre-order the transfers already. Some of them you can. I'm not, you need to check with your local retailer and see. Um, as far as being able to order online, I think it's April, excuse me, April the 7th is when the transfers will actually land. Um, so that you can't, or it's when you can order them online, April 7th. But I do believe some of the retailers are already taking pre-orders for them. Yes. Um, David, soon, very, very soon. David wants to know, are those new transfers by Dixie Bell? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, that's the two that I'm using. Um, the Floral Romance and the Succulent. So, let me get you a different look as well. This is just a piece. It's a four-sheet transfer, and this is just one piece of it. This one's called Floral Romance. And it'll be with this. And then also I'm going to throw succulents into the bouquet. I'm going to build with two different transfers. Yeah. What color will the inside be? I think that I'm going to go with this on the inside. <laughs> Won't that be fun? It'll be so much fun. This is Plum Crazy. Love, love, love Plum Crazy. So that's the inside. And I also will be adding a Would You Bend mold here and a Would You Bend mold here, and I think I'm even going to do a little bit of stenciling on the fronts of the drawers, like some peekaboo like we did uh, two weeks ago on the blue cabinet. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see the blue cabinet? Um, did you paint the hardware on the doors and drawers? Um, I have not, but I'm going to. I'm going to pull this around for y'all to see. See? Two weeks ago. It's 
very up close. Can you go see if that's too close for them? The back one came off. Okay. For me, the wheel? Yes. The wheel. Uh, no, this one's good. This one's... Is that good? So this is... Um, this is the new decoupage paper. This right here is the new decoupage paper. It's the Colorful Tiles decoupage paper. Um, it's called Colorful Tiles. And I use that here. This is Would You Bend, Would You Bend. Uh, this is the patina paint with the bronze. It's got patina smudge all over it. We did some peekaboo stencil right here. And some peekaboo stencil down on the bottom as well. So that's what we did last week. So the decoupage papers will be available just like the transfers. So that's what we did two weeks ago about that. Uh, this needs to finish up. So anyway, guys, it's been 7. It's 7.45. So um, I'm going to let y'all go so y'all can go um, have your Guinness or your green beer or not. Um, but thank y'all very much for joining both Instagram and Facebook. I appreciate y'all being here. Please follow along. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the greens next to each other, watching my scratch coat, and um, watch it come to fruition over the next week or so, okay? Love you guys, and y'all have a wonderful night. Happy St. Patrick's Day!